Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In my hand, you see me have a PC fee valve diaphragm crankcase valve that's located inside the valve cover. In my 2006 Audi A3, this is a common issue where the vehicle would want to shut down or have an uneven idle where it's just shaking all the time and it feels like you want to shut off. Now, whenever time you feel like the car is doing that, just check this right here by the PCV valve to see if that hole right there is sucking air. And if it's sucking air, that means that valve is broken in the crankcase inside of the valve cover. And that means that the air mixture for the car is running uneven. Now this video is going to be a little bit longer than usual. This is going to be a step-by-step -step video to go ahead and replace this valve. So now go ahead and subscribe and like the video and share it. And let's get into it. Here we're gonna start with the coil packs. They're a little bit tricky to come out. You just gotta use a flat head screwdriver, just like I have right here. It's a little pocket one. And you're just gonna go in there and open the tabs. So this way you can slide each connector off each individual coil. Then pop the cover off the wire harness and remove it to the side. And then go ahead and focus on removing all the connectors and hoses from the intake on the back of the intake. I like to use the needle nose grip pliers. They are really good to get around the hose and actually removing hoses from anything that I'm doing. This is a good tool to have. Do pay attention to the connectors that you're removing because you can break them very easily. Always try to get as much of the wire harness away from the area that you're working because it could always get in your way later on. Removing this hose, you have to be very gentle and careful at the same time. And yes, I made it look really easy by removing it like that, but it takes a lot of effort. Release it by squeezing both sides and then pull off. I've just removed the intake pipe that goes from the air box to the throttle body. And now I'm removing the four bolts that hold the throttle body. At this point, you would be just moving the hoses off the intake and let's put them in a the position that whenever time it's time for you to remove the intake, they're not in the way. This hose here is connected right here on the back side. And just making sure that all the connectors and all the hoses are off, you can go ahead and start removing the intake. There is two of these bolts on both sides of the intake manifold. This is a 12 point Allen key. There is nine bolts on the front of the intake manifold and you cannot get them that easy. So you're going to need to remove front bumper to get these bolts out. Mm -hmm. 
So now you have to remove flash guard from the wheel well and then remove a 10 bolt that is holding on the front bumper onto the fender. Now remove the bolts from the top side of the bumper and make sure that you remove the bolts from the bottom as well. Then go ahead and remove the front bumper. There is going to be some connectors for the fog lamps. Make sure you remove those and not break the connectors. Now we're going to go ahead and remove the headlights. You're going to need some T-tools extensions to get these headlights out. Remember when I say you have to take be careful with these connectors because you can break them. Um, right here I was trying to remove it without using the small pocket screwdriver and I kind of like popped the cap off from the back. Just put it back on and just uh, get the screwdriver to remove it. Here I'm just going to go ahead and remove the impact bar because this is very important that you remove this. Holding the impact bar there is 4 bolts and 4 nuts. You just have to hold the nut in the bottom to remove the bolts from the top. Now you just got to remove these bolts that's holding on the radiator support. There's 8 of them. At this point, you're going to need a jack like right here that you see me using the jack to support the radiator support. And you're going to need a 2x4 to make space between the radiator support and the intake manifold. Whenever moving parts like these, always give a light tug and see if there's anything that's grabbing on to whatever you're trying to remove. And this is a perfect example because here is the airbag sensor, impact sensor that is literally 3 inches worth of wire that's holding on to the radiator support. Removing this connector can be difficult. You have to push in and then squeeze and then pull back. That's the reason why I use the screwdriver to help me out with that to remove the connector. There's two sensors, one on each side. Now this is where the 2x4 comes in. You could use anything as long as you could create a little bit of a space without putting too much tension on all the components that's from the radiator support to the engine. This AC line right here, you just gotta shift it a little bit so that this way you can make a little bit more room. Now you should have enough space to go ahead and work on the front side of the intake.
Now these are the bolts you're going to be focusing on. You're going to need to remove the dipstick just a little bit so that this way you could have more room. I am removing the dipstick from its hole. When removing this canister, you need to be very, very careful with these plug connectors that's connected to it because if you're not careful, you can easily break these hoses. They are very brittle, they are very small, and they are very easy to break. Now I'm going to focus on removing this valve from this canister. This connector for this hose could be very difficult and the first time I removed on this, I actually did break it so just gotta be careful. There is another hose connected just underneath this valve right here. Right here you can see where the hose broke and I repaired it with a shrink wrap. Now you can start removing the bolts from the front of the intake. Now go ahead and remove the coils. Now you can remove the intake, just be careful. In this section there's going to be two bolts, in this section there's going to be another two bolts, and in the middle there's going to be a bolt but it's going to be higher up. Go ahead and remove anything that is surrounding the valve cover. Remove hoses and wire harness with bracket. This bracket on the driver's side, I didn't have to move it, but because I know this ground always gives issues, I decided to remove it to fix this ground.
now that you have everything cleared from around the valve cover, go ahead and loosen all the 10 bolt and 2 nuts. You could use a flat screwdriver and right here I have a small pry bar that I'm using to remove and lift the valve cover. In here, there should be some valves in here. I'm gonna see if I could get that. So apparently you're gonna need a torque tip. If memory served me right, I believe I was using a T27. This is plastic. Be really careful. You do not want to break this piece. If you break this piece, you're looking at at least $200. Just be careful when removing this. Now that we have the whole part out, now we're gonna go ahead and pop off the top portion of this where we need to get to. Okay. As you can see, this is where the hole is. And the hole is right here. You can see it. But let's see what happens. I crack this open. Okay. Now do pay attention to how I remove this. You have to go from corner to corner because of how thin and how brittle this plastic is. And if not, you can actually do crack and break this reservoir. And if you All do right. do that, then Let's you're gonna need another right one. So apparently there's a valve in here. Now once you have the cap off, you just have to pay attention to how it goes back on because a lot of times you might not pay attention to this and you put it back in and it doesn't fit properly. This is the hole that is in this valve right here and you could see it. This is what was causing that suction and you can just could tell by how brittle this valve is and you just gotta be careful not to lose the springs and that's it. Uh, continue watching. Whoop. Yeah. So now let's see. Okay, there's a spring there. Okay, let's grab the other one. The Nero one is gonna be a little bit thicker than the original. I bought these at the market. They are not OEM parts, but their fitment is OEM. So I just bought it to see if it would actually work and they, they everything match up perfectly fine. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fit everything and then finish the car. This part was $10, so it's very cheap.
At first, when assembling this valve part together, it is not going to sit properly because of how it's locked into each other. I was having issues. I was a little bit confused until I figured it out. You just got to make sure that the spring right here sits properly on top of the valve and make sure that it sits properly inside the cap. Once that is correct, you should be okay put the spring inside just like this and then go ahead and then push it down. At first it was a little bit like finick but I hold it upside down like this and then that's how I was able to actually lock it up. Now right here, I was looking at how it was sitting and I didn't like how it looked. So I just popped it back open just to double check to see if it was actually seated properly inside. And this is what I found. It was sitting perfectly fine on the inside. That is what you wanna see. Because remember when I removed it, that's how it was sitting. And this is what you wanna see. I would recommend that if you're gonna be doing this, do do what I just did. Like put it on, make sure that it's tight, and then remove it just to double check to make sure that it's in there properly. And then go ahead, lock everything up together. It's gonna take a little bit of a pressure to sit properly, but make sure it's tight. Make sure everything is sealed right around the edges, just like how you found it and you should be good. Now you can go ahead and install the seal that sits between this crankcase valve, the actual valve cover. Now go ahead and install the screws that was holding in the crankcase valve. Now we're gonna reinstall the valve cover seal. It's time to install the hardware for the bolts that is gonna be sitting inside of the valve cover. In this joint and this corner and this corner and this corner, we are gonna put some silicone. Then we're gonna dab it to make sure it's sticking and we're gonna do the same thing to the valve cover seal so this way we make sure that it once we put it down it can seal together properly now go ahead and install the valve cover
Now from this point, you're going to be reassembling back everything. Just be careful when you're doing this and remember to put back everything into place. Right here, I'm just gonna go ahead and release these two bolts that I had to keep the radiator support together. And once I do that, then it's back to putting back the two by four in to get the intake manifold on. And that's it guys. I hope this video helped. I hope you enjoy all the footage and if all the information. And if you have any questions, Questions, feel free to leave it in the comment and enjoy the rest of the video as I put everything back together there's gonna be a few things that you're gonna see here and just to make sure that you have everything back together I'm just gonna let this rest of the video go so this way you could see what to put back in order so this way it will help you put in back everything together don't forget like and subscribe and share the video all right enjoy Remember, it's nine of these bolts that holds the intake on together. Do not cross thread these bolts because they're aluminum. And if you cross thread them and put them on too tight, they will break. Reinstalling these bolts back into the valve cover can be a little bit challenging. You have to have really good patience to actually put these bolts in because you could be just putting these bolts in for a good 20 to 25 minutes. This is a torque spec I found online and you could always do your own research and if I'm wrong, you could always feel free to correct me in the comments. Make sure you catch all the bolts first before you start and tighten them. You really have to reach under to make sure that you get each one in because it's an awkward position. Now go ahead and install this uh, air box looking thing. Now reconnect the tubes. Now you can start wiring up back the car. You could go in whichever order that you choose, but just make sure that everything is reconnected and I'm hoping to end join the video.
The tabs on the headlight slides in so make sure that the bolts that you have right here is actually have space between it so this way when you go to put the headlight in it can slides in and you can lock it in place. And you could also see that this tab right here rotates. It's the way of adjusting the headlight so make sure it's wind all the way down like that so this way when you put the headlight in it will just go right into place. Now you could install the fog lights and the bumper should go right on with no gaps and then after you do that and make sure everything is good then you could go ahead and start the car and make sure everything is working. Now you have successfully repaired your car and now you can just put everything back together and enjoy your drives and whatever you do with your car. Alright, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.